Hello, Sterling. I'm Dylan Jess reporting for Sterling Athletics with your end-of-season report on the football team. The Knights started off their season with a dominating 35-6 win over neighboring school Triton. They then traveled to play a conference game against a strong Haddonfield team, which they were defeated 19-6. The following week, they returned home to take on Haddon Heights, which they won by a score of 27-19. They then went on to lose their next four games to West Defford, Paulsboro, Defford, and then Willingboro. Sterling would end their four-game losing streak by defeating Overbrook 28-6. The Knights would go on to play their last regular season game against rival team Collingswood. This game was their senior night and homecoming game, so all the players were fired up to play. The Knights fought hard throughout all four quarters, but it was Collingswood who came out on top with a final score of 6 to nothing. Despite having a 3-6 season, they still made the West Jersey Football League playoffs. The Knights received the 8th seed, which means they would travel to play top-seeded West Defford to take on the Eagles. It was a dominating performance by West Defford, which ended with a final score of 49 to nothing. This would be the last game they would play this season, finishing with a 3-7 and seven record. I sat down with Coach Cordova and discussed this season with him, and here is what he said. Looking back on this season, I feel like there were a lot of challenges. We had a young team. We had a lot of good seniors on our team. And it felt like we should have done a little bit better. Coach Cordova also said we had a disconnect between our older players and our younger players, and it was hard for the coaches to find a way to mesh it together. While we were discussing this upcoming season, he told me it all starts in the weight room with getting stronger and faster. If we can build our strength and speed, we are able to run some new plays we have drawn up. There were many players who made an impact this season, such as Stefan Johnson, Gavin Clark, Dylan Jess, and Michael Estramer, but there was one player who really stood out to me, and that would be junior LJ Williams. With that being said, my player of the year goes to junior LJ Williams. Williams was awarded with the first team all-conference honors at the running back position. He totaled 558 yards and four touchdowns. He also put up a dozen tackles on the defensive side of the ball. He was a key player on special teams units as well. For a first-year varsity starter, coaches were really impressed with what he produced. Let's take a look at two of L.J. Williams' top plays of the 2019 season. First offensive play from scrimmage. Could be a handoff to the left side. Plenty of room. Breaking a tackle is L.J. Williams. L.J. Williams is going to take the opening play to the house for the touchdown. 65 yards. First play of the game, number eight, L.J. Williams. First period, Jacob Johnson, the lone setback. Back. And looking, has a man open, it is caught, and in for the touchdown, Larry Williams. I had the chance to sit down with Williams and talk about his goals he set coming into his junior season. One of my goals for the football season was to rush for 1,000 yards. I prepared for that by putting in a lot of speed training and agility training in the offseason. Williams didn't achieve the goal he set coming into his junior year, but coming